Ty and Tiffany here, and we're with Patrick Frampton from the Florida Keys. A little bit of background. Um, what what makes you a uh, not an expert on on fishing, but but what gives you a little bit of insight? Oh my goodness, uh, just my experience uh, from growing up to working on boats, and by no means you guys know me. I'm no expert. I I learn <laughs> stuff every day. I uh, <laughs> you can't stop learning enough. Uh, that's the beauty of fishing. You got to be fluid. You got to learn what's going on. And if something works, try it. Uh, but as far as my background, really, it's just experience growing up here in Florida, having a real passion for fishing, I guess, and the connection with it too. It's really cool. Uh, I'd have to lend that to my dad, you know, and, uh, he pretty much got me involved with it. If he hadn't taken me fishing, gosh, he taught me everything from, how to make your own bait, how to catch your own bait, how to use your own bait to basically catching everything from a catfish to a sailfish, you know? So in that respect, I got to give it up to Pops. So um, you are from the uh, Florida Keys um, and- Oh, actually I was born in Miami. So the Florida Keys was like a really amazing destination. So it was always in my heart to end up there at some point in time. And I always said, oh, I'll, I'll retire there. Listen, at 40 years old, I was done. I was ready to retire, but still work. <laughs> <laughs> Working and retire at the same time. Very cool. What What is it specifically yeah. about the keys that uh, kind of drew you? You yeah. know it, Ty. There's a mystique that's just yeah. magical. You can get lost and just come back with an amazing experience or something you saw. It's just, it's something about it. It, it really... And once it hits you, you're you're hooked. It's it. Yeah, we definitely know the feeling of that. We've been many places, and I feel like the keys always draws us back. And you meet great people. We were lucky enough. Uh, one of the trips we walked into your establishment. Are you still uh, at that that location? I sure am. I'm um, most certainly at Abel's Tackle Box in Isla Mirada. Tackle Box. Yep, that's you literally a favorite tackle shop there. You know, starting off going to a different ta going to a few different tackle shops, and we walked into yours, and you definitely pointed us in the right direction. And you just take the tools that I give you, and hopefully they'll work. You know, you Absolutely. catch it on the right tide, some good luck, and man, you get put together a great day. Those are techniques that were taught to me, and I'm just paying it forward. Uh, they've worked for me, and I just want them to work for everyone else. So the other thing that you taught me down there is that pinfish are gold. You taught us that, and I've caught some good fish on that technique too, man. Absolutely, Tiffany. We're using them in class too. We're also cutting them up into steaks, and we're finding that they're catching the larger snappers when they're really schooled up and you're only getting the little ones. You put a big chunk out. Oh, it's like giving them a Delmonico steak. They just can't turn it down. Hmm. Awesome. Hmm. What, what kind of uh, fish are you catching with that technique? Uh, the mangrove snapper but the larger yeah. ones. Oh yeah. Beautiful. And you said in class. What what do you what do you mean oh, in class there? That's right. I'm doing a fishing school, a <laughs> free fishing clinic. It's on Thursdays and Saturdays at 10 a.m. and it's uh, at the local resort right there called Pelican Cove. I show up with 20 fishing rods and a bucket of chum, live shrimp and cut bait. In the beginning of the class, I'll discuss how the chum lures in the fish, how we use the sand to kind of throw a smoke bomb, if you will, in there and disrupt it. And then everybody gets to feel what it's like to catch a fish. And some days they're catching, you know, your eight, nine inch snappers. But if you check it out on Instagram, Abel's underscore Isla Mirada, you will see that they are catching Whopper snappers, Jack Crevels, a uh, bluefish, a mm. uh, big barracuda. Uh, the other, what was it? On Saturday, the guy caught a triple tail. Wow. <laughs> wow. Goliath grouper. You just have to go mm. out there and try it. That's all there is to it. Come to the Florida Keys and just give it a shot. Wow. You already that's, know. That's I'm preaching to the choir. That's awesome. <laughs> just w one or two little nuggets of information will explode into just epic yes. days it's just absolutely you know, one of my favorite is that one you're holding up the jack Ravel. Yeah, that whopper that. what and of course the snook i've seen them all but 
that was so yeah. awesome. That was probably one of my, I've caught a lot of fish, but that was probably one of my favorite fish I've ever caught. Yeah. That yep. was a whopper. You threw out that pinfish, man, and you were right. Bam. She was on. Like, Bam. Was Started screaming. Her first screaming. meeting with the uh, oh. jetty tuna, they call those. The, jetty, the old jetty yes. tuna. <laughs> That's and correct. Every, every time I thought I had that fight with those Cravalli, every time you think you have it, they take another couple yards and then another couple yards. You know, your line just keeps going. Yeah. You feel like, oh, I've almost got them in. And you feel like you're tired. The fish has to be getting tired. Mm. Oof. My arms, my arms yeah. after that morning, I caught three that size, a stingray and a black tip shark all within, <laughs> you know, sunrise. It was, it was yeah, one of the best mornings hours. I've ever had on the water for sure. It was amazing. I think that was, uh, but you did that from the shore. Yes. Yeah, yeah, everything. Beach. Everything we, we do did that yeah. right from the beach. Yeah. We, we basically like take whatever money we have and blow it <laughs> on fishing gear and, and, you know, accommodations for the trip down. We don't have money to do charters or, or any of that, so we of course we we're bound. Which which actually was one of the things that really you know really impressed me with with when when we first met you. you know, we walked in, yeah, we're you know we're just messing around. We don't know what we're doing. We're fishing from shore, and you're like, dude, these this is how to do it. This is where to fish. This is how to rig. Like all from shore. Like you got so excited about it, and like to me like the access is incredible the uh, the species i mean there's thousands of species that, that are potentials i mean it's just it's something else down there it's a world apart so yeah, man hey we're all so, cut from the same cloth man you yeah. know so just come on and talk to me i'll treat you just like i'm treating tiffany and ty right in front of me i'll tell <laughs> yeah, you what's up guy. definitely go see that. as a guy that lives in the keys has an opportunity to fish often if if you're going out on your own, what do you go for? What's your favorite? Or do it's you have seasonal? One? It okay. You know what? Again, it's seasonal, guys. You know when <laughs> when there's big fish here. Guess what? We're gonna be <laughs> targeting them. So that's yeah. you know when the when it's real hot, when the Royal Point Sienna's in bloom and it's super duper hot, that's when it's dolphin season. That's when it's tarpon season. Okay. This yeah. year I got to go out and catch uh, 22 dolphin in a span of four hours super fun super cool um the tarpon fishing i didn't get to do the tarpon fishing this year um in fact not many of us did tarpon fish now i think about it we were in quarantine so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, i didn't get to do the mangrove snapper spawn either so but those are th things that go on during the hot months and then when it starts to cool down man i'm going out on my paddleboard for snappers and just whatever it really uh, I'm like you guys, just give me a, a fishing rod and some bait and I'm going to go from there. I think that's what I love about the keys is you never know what you're going to catch. You know, you could th throw out a shrimp, you could get a wrasse or you could get a huge snook. You know, you literally don't know what yeah. you're going to catch on such simple, affordable techniques, in my opinion. I don't gamble. So this is my form of gambling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. that's why I look at it. You know, sometimes there's a return on my investment. You know, most times I'm just having fun doing it. Yeah. <laughs> there's always a return on the investment, even when you don't catch. <laughs> there's always Isn't a return. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> I got to agree with you there. <laughs> so so we've only ever caught that really kind of early spring from February until April is, is generally when we can get down there. But when should we be there and, and why? <laughs> well, okay. You know what? Quite possibly in the summertime, when there aren't a lot of folks here, May, June, and July. That's when you can post up on one of these uh, bridges or creeks and catch the 160, 180 pound tarpon. There are migratory fish that is here only during those months and then they skedaddle. They're out of here. Um, and when you get into one of those fish, that's like a life changing event because <laughs> it's as big as you are. For yeah, one. I haven't tangled with one yet. It's it's like amazing. So, <laughs> if somebody is going down there to target tarpon, what kind of gear should they expect to have to have on them to handle a fish like that? A uh, six thousand series medium heavy with sixty five pound braid. Yeah, uh, you need a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I gotta have really like a. They're using BG sixties and BG eighties heavy sticks, 65 pound braid on the low end, and definitely 80 pound leader. Um, they will chafe you up. 
I popped off many on 50 and they weren't but 80 pounders. So you do really got to use the heavy leader. We've seen them in there tailing. We've seen them in like just sitting there to where we can present baits to them over and over, but we haven't gotten one to actually turn and commit. Um, is that right. just the cooler water? They're just not feeding as heavily or do we, do we really have to get super pro? It's a, it's a great question, and I'm going to break it down to the science to it. We know that they're nocturnal. That much we know. They will feed like the Dickens at night, okay? okay. And in the daytime, unfortunately, they're going to want a live pilchard. Live yep. pilchard. They're a tough bunch to catch. Yeah. The smaller ones, you can find them in the, in the canals and maybe get them on a, um, uh, a jerk bait. But again, it's like, it's not guaranteed. But if you present a live pilchard in front of the tarpon, chances are he's going to eat it. That's wow. usually my go-to. And where you find the pilchards balled up, typically there's some tarpon around, especially by mm -hmm. the docks and arena. Trust me, on, trust me, if you got to get them and you want to get them, just get you some pilchards, find your little thing, boop, boop, you'll be done. <laughs> Yeah, it's one. That is one fish that I haven't really focused on because of their reputation as being very difficult biters. So you know, we kind of have focused on things that take a hook a little more more frequently. <laughs> of course, of course. I feel like at night, especially, is when I'm sitting there with my rod and a million casts for a snook. I'm just like, oh man, I want one so bad. Last time I came down, I, I didn't get the tag because I thought, oh, my chances of getting one are so slim. And you guys like Striper up here, you guys have the slot for them, right? Right. Like, anything bigger or anything smaller, it has to be in a certain slot. That's how it Correct. is with the bass up here. <laughs> did you, you caught that one at night? I did. Yep. I caught one and it was right at the maximum for keeper and I didn't oh. get the ticket. <laughs> I didn't get the ticket. I had to put it back. Cause I said, oh, I'll never catch one again. Like it's such a slim chance of me to catch one. I won't get the tag, but I should have gotten the tag, man. But back to the water, he went for someone else or <laughs> continue his journey. So you were saying like kind of that May, June, July for the, the tarpon is, is it? Yeah, yeah. They, when they show up, <sighs> buddy, it's on. And you could catch anywhere from say, three to eight to 13 in a night, depending on how good it is, if the conditions are right. Um, so yeah, you get six hours to fish, you know, because of the tide. Hmm. And it really picks up after the two hour mark. That's when, that, so you really just get about four, let's say four solid hours, but you start right at the top of the top of the high tide. You okay. Fish it as it goes out, that's what you do. And you fish it at night and that's how you coordinate your efforts to be the most productive actually. And, and right. you were saying pilchards, but I've seen like live crab work, the live shrimp work. Okay, now um, it's, the, it's the daytime because I was stressing the fact that they're nocturnal. They feed at yep. night. So at night, guess what they're eating? The, the, the blue crabs. crab. You've seen them yep. swimming at night. Didn't you see yeah. them all the time with the cuttlefish, yep. right? So that's what they're feeding on. That's why we use the crabs at night up top. Because what were they doing? Swimming yeah. with their claws out all friggin' night long. Yeah. But in the daytime, the tarpon go to the bottom and they mm. chill out and they get locked mm. jaw. But mm. just like you and me, if you put something that we really crave in front of us, chances are, oh, I'll just have one of those, uh, one brownie, you know? <laughs> That's a pilcher to them. They're like, I'll just have a one brownie and they'll eat it and there's your bite. So okay. if you want to coerce them, you've got to have it. You just put a live pilcher in front of them in mm. the daytime, they will eat it. <laughs> When we were down there, we did take home quite a bit of fish this year, which we typically don't, mm -hmm. but everybody kept saying, oh, there's no food in the grocery stores. Like you should definitely try to bring some stuff home. So we got like mackerel, we had mm -hmm. Spanish mackerel. We ended up with a lot of snapper, um, some yellow jack, which was pretty oh, cool. Yeah, that was, it was that first it was year delicious catching yellow jack. It was really um, good. Yes. Yellow jack is, is one of those, again, your hidden key secret. A lot yeah. of folks look at that fish and they go, no, that, that's a jack. You can't eat that. Well, you cut the bloodline out of it, marinate it in some lime juice, and it is some of the yeah. best ceviche 
sashimi, you name it, girl. It is delicious. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. correct. Beautiful, Beautiful fish. fish. The iridescence oh, on gorgeous. it is just mm. incredible. So I caught the first one. Yeah, you know, it got torn up by a barracuda, but I was still like, I was looking at it going, that's not a Jack Carvalho. Like, we were like, what so the hell confused. is that? Right. And, and thankfully, it was a local who said, oh, no, that's a yellow Jack. They're very good eating. So we, we were able to very, find that very out. Very good. Goodness. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Somebody locked you on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we brought home uh, quite a bit of fish. <laughs> Hey, Thankfully. that's that's awesome. Stuck it in the suitcase and flew it home. <laughs> yeah, we, we ended oh, up no there. Kidding. So yeah. so when we first got down there, there was no sign of trouble. By the time we left, there was no toilet paper in Rhode Island and very little <laughs> left in the keys. So we we oh my just God. went under the wire, man. It was like it was intense. It was intense. <laughs> we had people halfway through the trip calling calling us saying, oh, they're canceling flights, they're closing airports, you guys are going to have to drive home. Yeah. If you drive home, <laughs> fill up the car with mac and cheese and toilet paper. Like, people were freaking out back here. Meanwhile, you guys in the <laughs> Keys, you're like cool, calm, and collected. We talked yeah. to a bartender. She's like, oh, no, we're we're ready for stuff like this. You know, we, we have to stay indoors a couple times a year with hurricanes. We all take care of each other. You guys just like... I feel mm. like you handled it really calmly when we were down there, at least. How is uh how is the season yeah, been? How's it been? How, how's Are you guys so you guys? far? Uh, Do you feel like you have more people, less people? I would have to say absolute gangbusters. And looking at last year's numbers versus this year's numbers, we're we're over budget. We're making budget. We're making money. And there's sellouts at the hotels, hundred percent. Um. It's uncanny. It's absolutely uncanny. You know, it's mostly couples now. Um, the kids are kind of, they're more sequestered, I would have to say. They're probably doing their, their school from the laptop, like mm. mine is, yeah. <laughs> the virtual school. I'm sure that's <laughs> been a trip. <laughs> right? Yeah, I can't. It's older. Can't even imagine, Patrick. Yeah. Wow. Well. What a time. But it, it hasn't really slowed you guys down, huh? That's that's surprising. It really hasn't. Uh, there was a 92-day period where I wasn't working, and they just said, come on back. And that was it. We just started off from scratch as wow. if nothing really changed. It's uh, it's amazing. Are there any, like, regulations and stuff that people coming into the Keys should know about? Is anything else changed? Absolutely. As as... Okay. Absolutely. The, the regulations we have, uh, everyone has to wear a face mask uh, indoors. The only time they can take it off is if they're seated and they're having dinner. Mm -hmm. And then we're supposed to maintain six foot social distancing. And if we cannot, we're supposed to have a mask, even if we're outdoors. Because I know when we go down, there, those, those bridges are usually pretty packed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes we've went down, man. I'm like, man, how do those lines not get tangled up every two seconds? <laughs> right? How the heck do you land anything up there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you that's a great there? question, Ty. <laughs> um, and it's happened more times than not. Sometimes uh, we'll have a, a bridge landing net, which is a basically a big hoop that you lower down and you can lift it up. Um, but a lot of times I'm harvesting the fish. So when I was younger, I just had this little bridge gaff that I carried with me and it was okay. just a treble hook with lead on it yep. and um, the trick with that is having a little loop at the end like from a shower curtain and you can just slide okay. it, clip it on your line slide her down okay. down she goes and then pop her in the mouth and raise her on mm -hmm. up and that way you're kind Jeez. of self-contained you know hey bring me the bridge net from <laughs> half a mile down the bridge <laughs> right <laughs> Because when you're snook fishing, wow. you got to keep it moving, man. If the snook ain't there, he's not there. You just got to go to the next column and keep going and moving. Mm. You got to shoot and move. Keep it going. And um, mm. when you pop one, there he is. That shower <laughs> curtain. Get him for the food him. Genius. That <laughs> yeah. is very smart. That's a good trick. Just put it right on your line, slide it down. What a great, what a great suggestion there. That's something that was taught to me. Again, I can't claim that one. That's Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you exactly what I did. I had it on like a Cuban yo-yo. So it was all wound up just on my hip. So all I had mm. to do was deploy it and done. Wow. 
Yeah, because I, I had I had come up with that that as an idea is just a big snag hook on a piece of rope. But yeah, the whole the whole guiding it down yeah. with the with the ring like that. I that's that's a game changer. That's, that, under, that, changes under that, those makes bridges, the, that current rips. That current's going. So the second something hits the water, there there it goes. Like there's no control. And then on what it. about the kudas trying to eat your catch? Yeah. <laughs> We've had that yeah. more than once. I mean, like I said, my first yellow jack, they they whacked it good, and it was a you know probably a good five plus pound fish. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't Absolutely. small. Absolutely. And they they tore it to pieces. <laughs> yeah, they're they're in a eating frenzy. Those guys. <laughs> I want to ask another question about your fish like a local program. Do you find mm. that people who are coming they need to have a lot of knowledge, or is it like all you know people with with all different skills, all different levels of knowledge with fishing. I would have to say I meet people from all genres. From the the gentleman I had this past weekend had never fished a day in his life. Mind you, he was probably in his 30s and he was there mm. with his his uh, girlfriend or oh no, his fiance and he was just ecstatic and just to just to experience that in itself is enough for me just there's another one sold you, you, <laughs> um, but I find that you know what I mean yeah. it's just like the four-year-old kid or the seven-year-old kid or I see myself in that 13-year-old kid that's running up and down the beach casting a million times you know that was me and then yeah. the older folks that come in and they fished their whole life I've seen everything under the sun and then I get them and I go hey let me show you this little trick right here and I go hey what I've never seen that. <laughs> well, I mean, I was showing this. I'm going to show you. And next thing you know, we're joking, ribbing each other and sharing fishing stories. So I That's just, awesome. I enjoy the, the camaraderie of it too. Absolutely. Well, you're, Absolutely. you're teaching people so then they can pass it on to other people. And I know for us, I truly appreciate the fact that you've done that for us because you've, you've given us a lot of the skills that we have for fishing in the Keys. And I think it's wonderful you're doing the right thing you're supposed to be doing with your life right now because I can't think of a better position for you to be in <laughs> than to do in the fish like a local program. I think it's great. Look us up. Abel's Tackle Box. That's it. It's that easy. Fish like a local and he really will have you fishing like a local. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Tiffany. I appreciate it. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. And you too, Ty. <laughs> I appreciate you too, buddy. Absolutely. When are you guys going to come back? That's a good question. You know, we with especially with the current state of things, we, we really don't know. You know, as soon as possible is the, the short answer, though. Yeah, we I like it. that. Bring your GoPro, what have you, and I'll take you in some tunnels, and we're looking for some uh, Kubera snapper and snook. Absolutely. Kubera. No kidding. Oh yeah, they're yeah. just like the uh, bigger brother to the mangrove snapper, and they got teeth. Yeah. And they're. <laughs> it's been fantastic talking to you tonight, and I hope that you continue to do the fish like a local. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep an eye on you with that. Yeah, that's that. I mean, it's all really right. inspiring, especially you're doing it for no charge and all that, just to get the knowledge out there. Like that's, it's, it's very inspiring for me. That's, that's and incredible. You, do you have a page Thank for you, that? Ty. Is there something that uh, yes. people can go on and look look that up or? Absolutely. Um, so Abel's underscore Isla Murata is the Instagram link. Um, but if you go on Abel's Tackle Box on Facebook, you'll see a lot of footage too. Um, that's about, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. I'm trying to get more uh, content up there. This will be awesome. class number four since quarantine. So uh, look for some more content real soon. Yeah, we want to keep following your journey for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, I mean we, can't, we can't be down there right now, but we can live vicariously through yeah. you. Yeah, so. <laughs> you most certainly can. I will definitely put it out there, brother. You got it. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much, Patrick. Yeah, we appreciate oh, it. You're very welcome. Thanks to everybody that's listening and have a great night.